Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, video tutorial. I'm Frederick and today I will recreate the Omnibus 7.4 dynamic event dashboard I created in my previous videos using Omnibus 7.3.1 and Impact. Since Omnibus 7.4 is pretty new, uh, it's really just a couple of months when I record this video. I think it's fair to assume that uh, not everyone is up to the current version yet. I will also in this uh, video explain the basics of uh, operator views. There is a lot more than I will show in this video, so I recommend that you check out the operator view documentation and uh, just have a play around with the different functions. My setup today is uh, uh, Omnibus 731 and uh, Impact 511. The code I'm writing in Impact 5 should work in Impact 62 with uh, no or very small modifications. I'm using the Simnet probe as before to get uh, the data for our dashboard. The way we did this dashboard in Omnibus 7.4 was that we used the embedded web server in Omnibus to serve HTTP documents and JavaScript to the client. We then added styles to format the boxes. In the JavaScript we made an uh, AJAX call to the HTTP interface to get the event data on regular intervals and then we created the dashboard boxes. When using Impact, we connect to the object server using a DSA or a data source adapter. Then we have a policy for the data logic. The operator view will contain the display page that the users will see. The display page contains HTML and smart tags that will replace what we did with JavaScript in my last video. To format the style, I will use the same styles we used earlier in the Omnibus dashboard. The operator view I will be using today consists of uh, one policy and one display page. So let's get started by creating the policy. In Impact I'm using the default project and this is a completely new install of Impact so I don't have anything here yet. So custom policy and add. For the name of the policy there is a naming convention that we must use. Start with op view underscore and then the view name. The view name is the name of the operator view so let's call it op view underscore event dashboard. And I'm just going to save this for now and create the display page before we continue. Display pages are in this version of impact in uh, NC Home, GUI server, web apps, op view and display. In this directory I create a new HTML file and uh, the name of the HTML file is cluster name dash view name. So in my setup that is NCI cluster dash event dashboard dot HTML. I open that file. I always use a template for my operator views to get started quickly. I'll put my template in the description if you want to use it. So I just copy my template and paste it into the HTML file. Let's see what we got here. Title, I'm setting this to Impact Event Dashboard. And then we have a bunch of JavaScripts. These are JavaScripts supplied by Impact, so we don't need to worry about them. Just remember to link them in the header section of this file, like we have it here. I also have two required smart tags. The first one identifies the cluster name of the impact server and the second one the policy without the op view underscore. My cluster name is NCI cluster and the policy name is event dashboard. In the body section I will just write a header, heading to, center, impact event dashboard, end center and end heading to. Save. I'll change to another tab in uh, Internet Explorer so we easily can switch between the operator view and the impact admin. The URL to the operator view is HTTP, server name, port and op view. If I just press enter here uh, we get a list of all the displays on this server and behold there is our event dashboard display page. If I click this one we see the page I just created. In the address field we see the full path to the operator view page if we want to access this directly instead. So at this stage 
this is just a static web page. The policy was activated in the background, but it didn't return any data. To fix this, let's make the policy share some data with the operator view. In impact admin and in the policy, just create a variable. Let's call it uh, event data and give it the value. This is sample data from op view event dashboard policy. Syntax check and save. In the code for the display page, to print the variable we assigned in the policy, I go down to the body section and just add another smart tag. And this is the format of the smart tags. Uh, I'm going to use a smart tag called uh, show data. The variable I will be uh, accessing is event data. The type is scalar and the format is string. Let's take a look at this display page now. Refresh. And there is our event data. Let's create an object server data source to get some real data. I'm creating a new object server data source and name it DS object server. And adding connection details. Test it and save. Then create a type for this data source, name it DT dashboard. Base label for this is alerts.status, refresh. And I really don't need all the fields. I'm gonna select everything here and uh, deselect the one I need. Node, tally, severity, and just deselect serial two since I need a key field. And uh, delete the rest. Set serial to key field. And uh, as you remembered from my last video, I don't want node names that start with link. So I put that in the filter and um, order by node. Save this. I'm just going to view the data from the data type to see that we got what we need. And that looks OK. To get everything from the data type we created, I can use uh, get by filter function. So get by filter, data type name, dt event dashboard, filter nothing, and count only set to false. So when the display page activates this policy, all the records from the data source will be assigned to the event data variable. So syntax check, save. I go to the display page and the refresh. And this is just a number, so obviously something is not right here. In the display HTML page, we use the scalar type, but we are now returning a record set of data, so we need to use the type org nodes instead. So I'm changing this to org nodes and save and refresh. And there is the data in the table. As you remember from my previous videos, I prefer to have the data in an uh, unordered list to make the dashboard boxes easy to style. So let's just go to the policy and see if we can fix this. I will create a new variable called HTML output. This variable will contain all the HTML I want to print and send it to the display page. For testing, I'm just going to create some sample data to get the structure of the HTML tags correct. For every row of HTML code, I will just append to the HTML output variable. So I start with the unordered list tag. I will give this an uh, ID of dashboard items, just like we did in the Omnibus video, so that we can target this list from the styles. Then we had a list item and uh, heading three, the node name that contains the city, and heading three, heading two, and the number of events, uh, span tag, space, and the word events, and span tag, and heading three, and end list item. Then I append the closing tag for the unordered list. To print this variable to screen, I need to add a smart tag for it in our code. So let's go ahead and do that. 
I'm copying the first one and uh, change the variable name to HTML output. I change org nodes to scalar and type to string. Save and refresh. Yes, that looks just like what we had in my first video. The styles will create the boxes later, so let's just do a loop through all the values from the event data and append list items for every row. In the policy, first I create a loop counter so I can control the loop, set it to zero. Then while loop counter is smaller than num, and num always contains the number of records in the last get by operation. In the loop, I'll just add the loop counter so I don't forget that. Loop counter equals loop counter plus one. I only want to print the list here, so I cut uh, that out from our sample and uh, paste it into the loop. And instead of my sample data, I want the actual values. So instead of Tokyo, I write event data loop counter dot node. And for the number of events, I write event data loop counter dot tally. After loop, I add the uh, end of the unordered list tag to finish off the list. And uh, syntax check, save. On the display page, refresh. So now we have the list item for every row in the table, but um, I wanted the tally to be aggregated as we had it in the JavaScript. Uh, so let's fix that. Just like in the JavaScript, I need a couple of new variables one to hold total tally and one to hold previous city and uh, set them to blank. In my loop, I will also create uh, two variables named current city and current tally, just to make the code easier to read. I'll set them to event data loop counter dot node and event data loop counter dot tally. And then to the test, if previous city is equal to current city, just aggregate the tally. Total tally equals total tally plus current tally. If not equal. Here we needed to check if the previous city is empty. It will be empty on the first loop, so if it's empty, we just update the previous city and total tally to whatever the current city and tally is. If it's not empty, it means that at this stage we are about to start a new list item, so I better print out the current item to the screen. I'm going to use the previous HTML output and just change the node to previous city and the event count to total tally. After that's done, uh, I'm just going to reset the previous city and total tally to be ready for the next loop. To get the last record to show on screen, I also need to print out what's currently in the cache when we finish the loop. So I'm just copying the HTML output with the list items and uh, paste it right after the loop. Let's have a look at this. Yes, now we have the data in an uh, unordered list, but I need to hit refresh every time I want an update. In my JavaScript call, I had an interval set and we can do the same in the smart tag. Since I don't need to display the event data anymore, I will remove that smart tag. In my smart tag for HTML output, I'm just going to change this slightly so it's easier to read. Uh, I can put every property on a new line. And after the last property, I add update interval and set it to a value of 5 seconds for this test. Save and refresh. Now we can see that every five seconds, the list items are updated. And to test this, I can go to the event list and uh, delete all the events and uh, the list will be recreated. I will now add the styles we used in my last video. You can add the styles in line in the HTML file like we did before, but uh, just to do something different, I will create a file to hold all of our styles instead. On the server, uh, I go back one level in the path and change to the assets folder. This is where all of the styles and images for our operator view should be saved. 
I create a new CSS file, event-dashboard.css, and in this file I'm just going to copy and paste the styles we used in the last video. Save. I go back to the display directory, I edit the display page, and in the header section I'll put a link to the CSS file, and save. And uh, let's refresh and have a look. And that's it. Dynamic event dashboard using operator views. And to test it, we can delete all the events again. And it populates. So that was how to create the dashboard in impact operator views. I've now presented two ways to create this dashboard. One requires Omnibus 7.4 and one requires Netcool Impact. So which one should you use? I guess it's just up to the type of implementation. Uh, if I just want to access the data in the object server and want a highly customizable code, then I'll probably go for the HTTP interface. If I need to access other data sources at the same time and make development time shorter, then impact would be my choice. If you don't agree with me, I will be at Pulse next week. So if anyone that's a code geek like me want to meet up and discuss this further over beer, feel free to ping me on Twitter or just uh, look me up on the floor. And I just realized if you're viewing this video after Pulse 2013, uh, then feel free to make uh, an alcohol-free statement in the comment section below. Until next time, have fun with the code and uh, goodbye.